Well, for more on Colombia's economy, I spoke with Michael Haidt, vice president of DBRS Global Sovereign Ratings Group. I asked him to describe the impact the economy could feel with this peace deal being signed. In our view, in the near term, uh, we don't expect the peace deal to boost the economy uh, right away. Uh, a lot of the security improvements uh, are already incorporated into, into the Colombian economy. It was really the last decade where we saw the military uh, push insurgents out of uh, the urban areas, uh, the economic centers, and into remote parts of the country. Um, so uh, it's, it's really in the long term where we're going to see uh, the economic benefits materialize. It will happen gradually. Um, and that's going to be accompanied by the state gradually expanding its presence um, into um, parts of the country now controlled by the FARC. And Michael, you mentioned that this would be a long-term uh, strategy. So how soon then do you think we could see that? Are we talking months? Are we talking years to really finally see those economic benefits kick in? I think we're talking more like, uh, more like years. Uh, it's going to take quite a bit of time for sectors like agriculture or uh, mining to, to really see a pickup in investment. Um, and, and it's also going to take time for the state to expand its presence um, and provide rule of law in areas that were previously uh, uh, FARC controlled. What sort of role do you think this infrastructure is going to have in really boosting Colombia's growth? I think infrastructure development is key for Colombia. At the moment, it's a real impediment to growth. Uh, the Santos administration, when it came into the presidency, recognized this. And they've overhauled the infrastructure program in terms of design and financing. And we're start starting to see that get off the ground now. So we have a $20 billion uh, road concession program that's happening today. And this is really important for Colombia, both to uh, integrate the domestic market, so uh, a market in Medellin can reach Bogota in a, in a relatively quick and, and efficient manner, but also so that Colombian exports uh, can compete on the global on a global stage. And you did mention the role of the government in really getting that momentum going. So then what does this mean then for the future with regional partners? How are they viewing what's happening here? Right. Well, so I think the United States is uh, clearly an important uh, partner with Colombia. I suspect that that uh, economic relationship will only intensify in the years ahead. There's really three reasons for that. The first is that uh, there was a us Colombia free trade agreement signed a few years ago. Um, that will gradually reduce barriers to trade. Uh, second, the Colombian peso has declined or, or has depreciated substantially over the last few years. So that makes Colombian exports more competitive in the United States. And third, um, the US economy is picking up. So um, you're likely to see uh, greater demand for Colombian goods. Other partners, such as China, um, I think this is more of an opportunity. Um, uh, over the last decade, we've seen Colombian exports to China increase markedly, as they have all over the world for all other emerging markets as well. Um, but China is not as important to uh, Colombia as to, say, Peru or Chile. So I think uh, it's really, this is a relationship that, that could uh, develop substantially, has a lot of room to grow in, in the future. The agreement calls for FARC to completely disband. And in exchange, the government said it's going to make some major investments to really try and close that wealth gap. People always talk about these two Colombias between the rich and the poor. Right. Now, how, what can be done in order to ensure that this investment really translates into real change for some of the poorer citizens? Right. This is going to be a huge challenge in the post-conflict environment. Um, I think that the, uh, the, the peace accord, if, if approved next week, um, would be a big step in the right direction. But there, there's clearly a lot of challenges ahead. The government will have to um, expand its presence in areas that are very remote. It's going to have to provide public goods. And I think that if they can do that, I think it will take time. But if they can do that, they will not only um, improve public security and the rule of law, but they'll be able to provide uh, Colombian citizens, particularly the poorest citizens, with um, uh, greater public assistance.